Hello, everybody. This is Pamela. And this is Tracy. And we are here to discuss how business really works. Today, we're going to talk about firing your clients. Have you ever had to do that? Or maybe you should? It's been a topic on my and Pamela's mind here lately for some unfortunate reasons. <laughs> and um, we're going to talk about the three reasons you should fire a client. And we'll also give you some hints on how to go about doing it. So Pamela, number mm -hmm. one, well, it's not the number one reason, but what's one of the reasons we fire clients? Well, a big reason that we may want to fire a client and that I have had to fire clients in the past is if they are high maintenance. And we are not talking about they need their nails and hair done at all times. <laughs> we are talking about high maintenance in terms of the needs and demands they put on you and on the scope of the project. Yeah. Or they have a tendency to try to add things to the scope of the project or get you to work outside your area of expertise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some examples. I can give you a good example. There's a big difference between copywriting and writing content. Yes. Copywriting is an art. When you have a client that you're running a marketing campaign for and you're writing content, and now all of a sudden they want you to write copy for their website. Well, one, if this is not your area of expertise, you can't do it well, and it's probably not gonna be something you want to hang your trademark on. Plus, you know, they're trying to get more from you than what you originally contracted for. And so I don't really work with people who try to creep. Scope creep, you mean? Yeah, they, they, they like to creep on the, the, just let's add a little bit more to what you do. Let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Instead of sticking to what was agreed upon when we decided to do this project and we created the contract. Yeah. Now, I can just see people rolling their eyes at this particular point because scope creep is endemic. It's really something that I think is more the norm <laughs> than it is the exception, which is not the way it's supposed to be, but... Scope creep happens all the time in projects, whether you are a freelancer providing services to another business or whether you are a, a company, an agency providing marketing services to another business. We're not suggesting that you just fire all your clients because their projects aren't exactly the original specs. What we are suggesting is that if this becomes a pattern and it's destructive to the project, destructive to the relationship and or you are you feel that you're being taken advantage of. Like writing copy for a website, if done well, can command rates that maybe some other marketing services don't command. And if a person is asking you to do a higher priced service for what you charge now, whether or not it's in your wheelhouse, it's almost an unfair situation from the start. But even if it's not in your wheelhouse, you don't wanna be doing that work, that's also another reason to refuse the work, or at least to try and negotiate and keep the project in the original scope that it was. Would you agree, Tracy? Yeah. And in order to make sure you're not like misunderstanding what I'm saying, I'm not talking about you did a bad job defining the scope of the project and therefore there are things that have to be handled. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about someone who constantly tries to add it constantly tries to take advantage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in my example of creating copy versus creating content, you know, I'd be straight up and say, I'm sorry, that's outside my area of expertise, but I highly recommend this person. Mm -hmm. And if they just keep pushing and demanding that you do it, that is a disrespect of you, your uh, relationship, and your area of expertise. Yep. So why do we need to fire these high maintenance clients? Is it just the disrespect? Is it because you will not end up making a good return on your investment in them? All of the above? All of the above. Basically how it harms you is if you're putting in extra work for this client that you're not being compensated for, that's time you're not working with another client who will compensate you. Yeah. If this client's demanding too much of your time and energy, too much of your resources, then you're taking that away from other clients 
that you could provide a better job for, you could have a better working relationship with, and they could do a better job of bringing the ideal clients to you. Well, let me throw this at you. Say we've got a freelancer who is listening to this episode of the podcast and they are bootstrapping it, they're hungry, they need the work, and the first client they land is doing this to them. They're trying to tack on all these additional services for no greater pay or somehow or other take advantage of the provider, but this freelancer needs the work. So what do you say to that person? Oh, you want me to backpedal, aren't you? <laughs> no, no, I'm asking because I've been in this situation in the past. Okay. Number one, stand your ground. Mm-hmm. Do everything you can to keep things in scope because once they accomplish this, you're never going to back them down in the future. That's true. Once you give in, you'll never back them back in the future when it does matter. Mm-hmm. And secondly, I would be working my butt off to find that second client. <laughs> and get out from under this situation. Well, I'm going to add to that. I wasn't trying to get you to backpedal, actually. I wanted you to kind of answer the way you did because here was my, I mentioned that I have been in this situation in the past and here was the outcome of it. So, and in fact, I've talked to Tracy about these kinds of situations in my own professional life. What happens if you let this client run roughshod all over the project and all over you is just as Tracy said, you are setting the precedent for them to do it from here on in for the rest of whenever you work with them. But if you put your foot down now in a professional manner, I'm not saying get nasty with the person, you always have to be professional. But if you do set your limits now, what will happen is that Nine times out of 10, I think, they will actually respond to that favorably. I mean, they may not like what you're saying, but they will respect the fact that you're setting up boundaries and that you are insisting that you be treated like a professional. The fear, I think, and I had this fear as well, is that, oh my God, I can't stand up to this client because then I'm going to push them away and I'll have no work. But actually, I think it works the opposite way. And this also reminds me of a a situation where I was working for a consulting company. So I I was working for one consulting company, interviewing at another, and I got an offer at the second consulting company for more money, and I was inclined to take that offer. I eventually did, but they wanted to see um, my pay stubs from the previous job. I wasn't comfortable with that, first of all, because that's my personal, you know, they don't need to see that to know what value I bring to the job. And yes, my previous salary had been lower and I did not want them to get that number in their mind and then not offer me what I knew I was worth. So I didn't want that to happen. I also just had a problem with it on principle. And they told me if I did not supply my W-2s, I would not be made an offer. And I very respectfully said, thank you very much. I'm going to decline providing my W-2s. I really appreciate your time up until now but that's not something that I'm comfortable doing. So I hope you find a candidate that works better for you. And I walked away and then guess what? Next day I got an email saying, but the client really likes you and they want you on this project and blah, blah, blah. Let me see what I can do. And they made an exception for me and hired me without seeing my old W-2s. They gave me the salary that I wanted and I was prepared to walk away. So I think that works in the corporate setting. I think it works in a personal setting, like a a freelancer setting. If you stand up for yourself and your value, more often than not, they will come to you anyway. Well, I'll be honest with you. They weren't concerned about what you were making. Hmm. They already knew what they were willing to pay you. Right. They were just trying to get data on the competition. Ah, what you are paid by another employer is proprietary information between you and that employer. That's right. Somebody else's business. That's right. And that's what I basically said to them. Um, oh, I didn't think of it in those terms, but hmm, you're right. And it and this point still stands. It has nothing to do with what they were prepared to offer me and what I wanted to get from them. But I stood my ground. I said no. <laughs> and I, I honestly thought that I was going to lose that potential job offer, but I didn't. So don't be afraid to stand up for yourself just because you fear the worst. The worst is probably, it might happen, but it probably won't actually. You probably will be setting yourself up for a very healthy relationship with this future client because now they know that they can't push you around. 
Mm -hmm. Well, and truthfully, well, let's just let's look at that situation. If the person does get angry and say, all right, I'm not going to work with you. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I don't care if this is your first client. Within three months, you're going, oh, I'm so glad that happened. Yes. These people will drain you. They're vampires. <laughs> <laughs> That's ugly, but honestly, they're vampires. They're out mm -hmm. to suck your blood. Most of the time, people will just see how far they can push the envelope without actually expecting to get anything. They're mm -hmm. waiting to see how weak you are, if you are a pushover. And if you stand up to them, they're just going to respect you and you're going to have a great working relationship. And you're probably going to have a better working relationship moving forward because you've created a level of respect between the two of you. Yeah. You're, you're now someone who is an asset to them rather than an employee they can push around. That's and right. As a freelancer or as a contractor or anything of that nature, that's the position you want to be in. You want to be their asset, not their employee. Yeah. And to do that, you have got to believe in your own value. And Tracy and I harp on this. I mean, practically every episode we do in some form or another. Maybe we don't say it exactly like that, but really that's what it comes down to. You have got to believe in your own value in order to take a firm stand, a professionally firm stand, but firm nonetheless, and don't back down. Yeah, and it's very simple. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Yeah. Okay, the other reason you would fire a client is they constantly try to negotiate your price and your terms. Mm-hmm. Oh, now this one is so common. And hopefully you're going to figure this out about a client before you ever sign a contract or truly take them on as a client. Hopefully you're going to find out in the discovery phase. But it is very common for someone to hire you, not say a word about your price, and pay your price and then the next project comes around and guess what they think they should get a discount because you know there's that understood thing about the preferred customer discount mm -hmm. i don't have a preferred customer discount i price fairly from day one so pamela do you have any examples about this well i have been through this recently where i quoted a project and there was a lot of back and forth about my rate and if I wasn't going to change my rate which by the way was a standard rate for the work that I was doing in fact I probably could have quoted even more but you know I was trying to not scare the client off but still command a decent rate and if I wasn't going to budge on the rate then they wanted to cut back the amount of time that I was going to take on the whole thing and I had already estimated my time conservatively. I know a lot of freelancers don't. And you shouldn't estimate your time too conservatively because things always happen. But I was being very conscientious of keeping it to the minimum that I would be satisfied with doing myself and also the minimum that I felt would provide the client the value that this person wanted. Um, and there was just so much back and forth about it that I was finally, I finally just thought to myself, you know, Maybe they can't afford me. Maybe that's the situation. Or maybe they are just a bargain shopper and that's how they approach their business in general. In which case, if they are a bargain shopper, I am not the product that they want to buy. I'm not the most expensive consultant out there, but I'm not the cheapest. And I'm not going to act like I'm the cheapest either. I put out excellent quality work. I am very conscientious about it. I'm almost perfectionistic about it. And I'm not going to lower myself and lower my rates to the bargain basement price when I am a premium product service provider. And so finally, I just kind of the light bulb went off. And I also discussed this with Tracy, that this person was obviously going for the cheapest that they could. And that wasn't something that I was willing to do either now or later. So I did I walked away, I just said, you know, thank you. But I think that other consultants may may suit your needs. And Thank you for your time. And that was all. And why do you need to fire this client? Well, the number one reason is why should you be doing discounted work when there's other people that are out there that will pay your price? That's right. Kind of goes back to that idea of creating the vacuum so the good stuff can come. Mm -hmm. If your time's taken up with people that aren't paying you your regular rate, then you don't have time for the people who will pay you your regular rate. Exactly. Exactly. 
And the other thing is, do you really want to have to negotiate everything every time? I mean, that's the purpose of having repeat clients because it makes the workflow and the process so much easier. If you have to go through the whole discovery process before every single project, you might as well just be bringing in a new client anyway. Now, I do want to say something about pricing and value and, and all that stuff because I hear this from too many gurus, the whole thing about raise your prices, charge what you're worth, you are valuable, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Bullshit. <laughs> okay? There is a price the market will bear. There is a price the market will pay for something. Now, does that mean there can't be premium products? Of course. But if your product or service is, you know, let's, let's take cars for example. Are you a Toyota, are you a Maserati, or are you a Lamborghini? Yes, they're all cars. But any car enthusiast will tell you there is no commonality other than the fact that you can sit in it and drive it. So you have to know, one, what is the level of your product or service? That's your value. But then you have to know what the market will bear for that level. So just because I have a Lamborghini service doesn't mean I can go out there and get a million dollars for my Lamborghini. Yeah, going rates around 400000 You can't just pull a price out of your ass and wish on rainbows and lollipops. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> what? I can't? Oh, <laughs> forget it then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there might be that strange unicorn of a client out there who will pay. But for the most part, there is a market rate. So study your market know your value in the market and price accordingly and be firm on your price. Yeah, you can't just ask a price because you want the price. You have to ask what's within the market range as well. All right, now the most serious reason you need to hire, fire a client mm -hmm. is that they need a psychiatrist or some other form of professional help. Oh, yeah. If you're in business long enough, you're going to have one of these people. I've had several. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Just, you cannot uh, fix someone's problems when their problems have <laughs> nothing to do with the project. When they can't do the things they need to do for you to move forward because, you know, there's one tragedy after another. They emotionally can't handle things. Mm -hmm. Life is just too difficult. You know what? Say your blessing for them, but end the relationship. Yeah, absolutely. You do not need that negative energy within your agency, your company, or in your own personal life. Yeah. And I've mentioned this before on this show, but I need to say it here because it's so applicable. One of the reasons I left corporate is because I was in a position where I had to bend over and let myself get you know what up the butt <laughs> by abusive clients, by uh, bosses, bosses, quote unquote, I was the consultant. So I wasn't working for them as an employee, but I was the consultant to these quote unquote bosses. So they were in effect my boss and just emotional problems, they were bullies, whatever. But as an employee of the consulting company, they expected me to just take it. I mean, sure, they tried to help and intervene if it ever got that far where they could, but really those intervention efforts were too little too late and the damage had already been ton done to my trust in my company. It had also, damage had already been done to the project. You cannot fix people's emotional issues. You cannot make a bully see you as an equal or see other employees as equals. You cannot make someone who is desperate for attention um, and who behaves inappropriately in the office, you cannot make them whole and normal. That is, that is not your job. It is not your job to be their confidant. It is not your job to fix them. It is not your job to be on their side when they start a war with some other manager in the company, which I have been asked to do. I've had bosses ask me to spy on other managers, employees, mm -hmm. because this particular boss set up a war with some other manager and she wanted me to do her dirty work for her. 
I was like, absolutely not. I don't care if you fire me today. I'm not spying on people for you. (laughs) I mean, these people need help and you need to get away from them. (laughs) Yeah. And, and unfortunately people who are mentally and emotionally unstable can appear to be functioning perfectly normal. And then these weird things will happen. That's true. Yeah. I guess, you know, one of the, the things that I always recommend is that you just take full 100% responsibility because if you ever try to let them know why you're not going to work with them, they're going to get very much on the defensive. Just fully take responsibility. Make it all about you, your inabilities, the fact that you can't do it. And I think the easiest way to do it is keep it as short and sweet as possible and do it as quickly as possible. The longer it drags out, the harder it'll be. But I usually tell people, I just don't feel that I am qualified and capable of doing what you need to have done. I can't do it. My team is not going to be able to fulfill your needs. How can they argue with that? I think the tendency is to try and explain why you can't work with these people. Don't explain. First of all, you don't owe them any explanations. If you're not ready to work with them or qualified to work with them, that's all you need to say. You don't owe them an explanation. But second of all, if you do explain, that opens up the door for them to try and convince you why you're wrong. You don't want that to happen either. Then you get into a big back and forth with them about them saying why you're wrong and you're on the defensive now. No, just just say what Tracy said. I am not qualified. My team is not qualified. We are not prepared to work with you. Thank you very much. And if they ask for an explanation, you do not need to provide one. What you've said is enough and they just have to accept it. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting. I have fired clients at every level. <laughs> when I had retail stores, I fired clients. I've had people walk into a store and just belligerently attack my employees. Wow. You know, and an employee is trained, customers always write, take whatever, you know. But if I was there and I witnessed it, I would walk right up to the person and I'm saying, I'm sorry, this is a human being. You cannot treat them in this manner and you are no longer welcome in my store. Please leave. Now, that is a little aggressive, but, you know, you're in a one-on-one in a retail store. But, you know, today working with clients, I've even fired a Fortune 500 company. Really? Yes. They were not worth it. Interesting. The constant having to go over the same crap over and over again, explain things over and over again because this committee couldn't properly relay it to that committee and this other higher level person couldn't understand it. da 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 and I'm just like, you know what? Your money's just not worth it to me. Mm-hmm. And so I basically just stated exactly what I said. I'm sorry, but I and my team are not capable of providing what you need. That was it. That was all the explanation they needed. So respect yourself. No one's check is worth not being respected. And if you put yourself in a situation where you're not respected, it gets out. You know, they have their friends who aren't going to respect you either that they're going to recommend you to. Mm -hmm. You don't want those people as clients. You want your dream client recommending people to you because they're going to recommend people like themselves. That's right. We all say that one of the things that is an allure about being an independent business person or a freelancer is that we get to choose who we want to work with. And that is true, but you have to have the balls to actually make that happen for yourself because you will come across these difficult clients, these clients who want to take advantage of you, the clients who need professional help. (laughs) And so what you choose to do at that point determines whether you're going to be in this same vicious cycle of not being respected and not having your value respected or whether you get out of that and establish healthy boundaries and healthy working relationships so yes you can work with whomever you choose to work with but you've got to actually set those boundaries yourself nobody else is going to do it for you exactly and it's interesting you know we make it sound like this happens all the time 
<laughs> Honestly, maybe for me, one in every 20, 25 clients when I was running retail or in my e-commerce businesses, literally maybe one in a thousand customers is a pain in the butt. Yeah. You don't need them. And like I said, it, the smaller you are, the less bandwidth you have to put out there in the world, you need to free that bandwidth up for the most ideal clients. Exactly. And you're probably wondering, you know, like, if, if you say what I said, if you say, I'm not capable, is it going to cause a bad reputation? And I'll be honest with you, I've never seen that happen. The main reason is, is most people know those people are a pain in the ass. <laughs> and they actually chuckling when they're telling this horrible story about how you were not capable of fulfilling their needs. They're chuckling under their breath and thinking, yeah, there's somebody that can stand up for themselves and be respected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's just like when you read reviews and you hear people complain about like really stupid things and you're like, um, that's kind of like user error. <laughs> you you, you mm-hmm. disregard that criticism. Same thing's going to happen if a client goes around talking about the fact that you weren't capable of fulfilling their needs. People know. Right. They know what that means. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Freeing up that mental space in your life, freeing up the bandwidth for you and your team to bring on more ideal clients will way outweigh any potential negative side effects that this pain in the ass can create because they have a reputation also. Amen. (laughs) Oh, was that a (laughs) preachy? All right. So we want to know, have you ever fired a client? And why? Or do you have a client you need to fire? And we want to know why, too. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the gossip. <laughs> we want to know these gritty details. Yeah, we need all the sordid details. <laughs> <laughs> so head on over to How Business Really Works and... Dot com. Leave us a comment. I did it again. All right. <laughs> So head on over to HowBusinessReallyWorks.com and leave us a message and comments to this episode or click on the contact button and send a private message to Pam and I. We would love to hear from you. Yes, and when you go over to HowBusinessReallyWorks.com, don't forget to sign up for our emails and you will get a vision, goals, and focus workbook that Tracy has been working on quite hard for I think several weeks now you've been putting this thing together Mm -hmm. and uh, it is a comprehensive just as its name implies helps you plan your vision helps you plan out your goals and helps you focus on achieving those goals so you can get from point a which is I haven't started to point b which is eventually achieving those goals it's going to really help you out and I am actually going to be doing uh, probably a mini series using this workbook to further my own goals and my own business. So I'm gonna be documenting how I use it so you can tune in and see how I've been using it and see how it's helped me. But go over to howbusinessreallyworks.com and get that workbook, it's gonna help you a lot. We are making this workbook available for free through June, July, and August. After that, it's going to be a paid product. So now is the time to get it and start using it and give us your feedback once you use it. Let us know what you like about it and how it's helping you. So don't forget to get that workbook and please don't forget to like this episode and share this episode. Let us know what you think. And if you are listening in iTunes, please, would you consider leaving us a review? It would be very helpful for us to hear what you think about us, to get some feedback from you. It will also help us be found in iTunes so that we can continue helping more people just like you grow your business. So like, share, Leave us a review on iTunes and we will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.